If you don't know anything about it, you're like, what is DECA? I've never heard of it before. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more. Talk to Mrs. Van Burkham. She'll be able to explain it because it's an awesome club and it looks really good on resumes after four years as well. So thank you very much for coming. I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Springstead and Mrs. Rose, and they're going to talk a little bit about the book hopefully you brought with you today. with your students 
Um, we went through a lot of detail. What you will hopefully notice as we go through each department tonight is that what uh, a big chunk of time we spent was highlighting the courses in the Career Pathways books that are available for freshmen. They're certainly not going to be able to take everything that's highlighted, but at least that should maybe be a step in the um, direction of helping you to navigate this book. Like Dr. Coombe said, it can be a little overwhelming, so trying to sort through what's available for next year versus planning for the next four years. Starting today through um, next week, we are allowing the students to spend some time in FCE and of course at home with you talking through what their course recommendations are for next year as well as kind of making that selection. So in FCE today, they each got a course selection sheet. Um, some of them had recommendations from staff members in certain areas, um, and that's where they will make their selections. They will bubble in their, their first choice, as well as alternates, which are backup plans. Um, and then they turn those into the middle school, who then um, swiftly hands them over to us so that we can enter them in and start building the schedule for next year. The course selection sheets are due next Thursday to Mrs. Knott in FCE, and then May, very vague timeline, but hopefully um, by the end of May, then each student will have a schedule in their hand so that they can see what their ninth grade year will look like. So in general, this book, um, we print only for eighth grade students. We revise it every year as our curriculum changes. So it is available on the school high school website. Every single year, the updated version is there. Your students are the only ones that get this nice printed copy for the purpose of our work with them um, in transitioning to high school. Um, so everybody should have one. If they don't, I would imagine it's still in Mrs. Knott's room at the middle school. <laughs> but like everything they own, where we think it is and where it actually is might not match. Um, but in general, you can follow on page three, how do I use this book? And the beginning half of the book is related to something called 16 career clusters. Each eighth grader has taken the career clusters interest inventory, which is one way to help them kind of determine what might be some good areas of our curriculum to look into as far as coursework to help prepare them for their interests and abilities um, and direction they might take for life after high school. So in using that survey to get their career clusters, then they would also be able to connect the high school course descriptions, which are in the back part of the book, with the programs of study in the beginning part of the book. So for example, if a student said marketing was their program of study, then they would be able to follow the suggested courses that are taught in our high school and would be related to that career cluster. So we will be giving you detail in each department tonight about those courses. Course descriptions are in here, but of course we want your students to reach out to us with any questions along the way as well. Like Ms. Springstead mentioned, um, students will be turning in their course request sheet by next Thursday to FCE. A few things to mention with the course request sheet, students need to sign up for at least seven credits. So at the high school, signing up for seven credits means that your student would have a study hall each semester. Of course, they could sign up for the full eight credits, meaning no study hall either semester. On the course request sheet, you'll notice that we have a column that says alternates. And what that means is we're really looking for if a student doesn't get their first choice of an elective, for example, what else might they want to take? So as a backup plan, rather than Mrs. Springs and I just kind of guessing the areas of interest, we ask for those alternates just in case something doesn't work out in their schedule so we can plug in another area of interest in there. In the last page of the Pathways book is what's called a four-year plan. And this is the paper copy in here. We ask eighth graders to complete a four-year plan, and we really emphasized last week that these are ideas of classes they want to take in high school. By no means are we saying we are choosing our next four years without any chance to make changes. The reason that we have students do four-year plans, one is we want to make sure they understand what they need to take in high school to graduate. So the graduation requirements are written on this four-year plan, uh, the sample page in the back. But in addition, 
being able to take classes in high school sometimes involves some pre-planning. We have limited time in our day, only eight periods, so not everything you want to take freshman year is going to fit. So what, what other years might I be able to take an elective if it doesn't fit freshman year? Are there prerequisites for classes that I want to take later on in high school? Again, that pre-planning is really important. As Mrs. Springs had mentioned in the front of the book, in those programs of study, there's sample for your plans in there. So if a student says, gosh, I'm really interested in finance, what are some classes I could list in my four-year plan? That's where the program of study comes in. Students will be entering their four-year plan electronically into a program called Zello. And um, that is very helpful to have it electronically, so we're not trying to hold on to a piece of paper that we fill out in the eighth grade. That four-year plan is updated each year as we do scheduling for the next year, and it's something that Mrs. Springs and I will take a look at. We meet with each freshman and a parent or guardian next year, first semester, as just a chance to get to know them better, get to know their interests, and we'll take a look at their four-year plan and make any changes needed. Eighth graders, we quizzed you multiple times right on the graduation requirements, and they did a great job remembering these. Um, so you can see the graduation requirements listed. 24 is the magic number that we emphasize to our eighth graders, and the graduation requirements are also listed in our um, Pathways book as well. Please know that a big part of Mrs. Springs and my job is working with students each year on scheduling, on choosing classes that are meeting graduation requirements, and choosing classes that will help them explore their interests and planning for after high school as well. I mentioned uh, Mrs. Tate earlier, she is in charge of our Distinguished Service Graduate Program and while she's not here, she did want to make sure that students coming into high school were aware of this. This is the program that um, acknowledges the amount of community service that your son or daughter might be doing and so we acknowledge this through a court at graduation if a student accumulates up to 200 hours of community service throughout their time in high school. Um, a couple of years ago, some students were advocating for hours in middle school counting towards this honor, and so that is happening as well, um, that you can count some of your hours that were documented in middle school as well. So if that's of interest to you, if it's something you're already doing, um, please get in touch with her as you start the, um, your career in high school. Keep track of that. We're, we're pretty loose on the how you keep track, but just know that that's something that is looked at um, for things like scholarships and awards towards the end of high school. So if you're already doing some of those things, just keep track of those hours and we'll help you pull it all together in the end. Before we transition to the departments, um, one of the things you're gonna hear staff members mention tonight, along with their curriculum and coursework, is some of the extracurriculars that they advise. And I'm gonna take this chance at the mic to put a plug in for the German Exchange. It is a program that my husband and I started several years ago. Due to obvious reasons with the pandemic, we've been pushed back now a couple of years, um, but just to put it on your radar, your students would be able to go with us their sophomore or senior year. Um, we really encourage sophomores and juniors to go on that trip. Um, the age of the school, or the age of the students in the school that we do the exchange with in Germany is also about sophomore age, ninth and 10th graders usually, so it's a nice matchup. Um, Germans, German students come here in the fall and one of them would stay in your home for about 10 to 12 days, and then our students go to their school in the spring, usually around spring break, and then your student would stay with the same student that stayed in your house. So just keeping that on your radar for future planning. Next up, Mr. Dupuy. Hello, my name is Mr. Dupuy. I'm the K-12 Athletic and Facilities Director. My number one challenge for you in the next four years is to get involved. We offer numerous clubs and uh, sports at the high school level. Uh, these can all be found on our high school homepage um, with information on who their coach or advisor is. You'll hear from a lot of them tonight um, plugging their sports or their clubs. If there's a club you want to start, stop by my office. Let's talk about it. Um, we're always looking to, to start new things that people are interested in. If you want to talk sports, stop by my office. Um, you can always reach me, email or phone as well if you have questions. Um, clubs run year-round. Athletics have three seasons, fall, winter, and spring. 
Uh, if you're an incoming freshman, you'll need a physical if you're planning on participating in athletics. Um, please try to take care of that during the summer. Um, as a lot of our athletes, are, a lot of our sports start in August. So you want to try to get in and take care of that um, so you're able to practice right away. So please plan accordingly. They do not start when school starts. Um, our season starts before school at the high school level. Um, we also run a strength and conditioning class throughout the summer. Um, so look for that um, in your summer school uh, um, course handbooks and registration. We're also looking to, to offer one week kind of segments um, for your sport throughout the summer. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me and I can answer any questions you have. Otherwise, I look forward to uh, watching you grow in the next four years. Thank you. don't know me, I am Mrs. Leah Zimmerman. Um, some of you have students within high school right now, um, and you might have known me as Miss Leah Lipke, but over the summer I got married, so um, kind of added a little bit to my name. Um, <laughs> just a little bit. So I am here to talk a little bit about what I do as the agriculture teacher and FFA advisor. Um, agriculture is near and dear to my heart. I did not grow up on a farm. But I eat, I'm clothed, I have a home. So just like all of you eat every day, agriculture is super important to every single one of us. So ag contributes to Wisconsin's economy, uh, $104.8 billion annually, and there are tons and tons of careers and different jobs under the sun that you can pick from within agriculture. So some of the classes that are offered to freshmen um, the first one is Intro to Ag and FFA. So we talk a lot about literally everything that has to do, do with agriculture. Uh, it's not just the cows, paws, and sows anymore. There's a ton of different opportunities within science, uh, within IT, computer software. There's all sorts of different jobs within that industry. And we talk a little bit about those within Intro to Ag. And then, of course, we talk about FFA, too. So that brings me to my FFA advisor role. Uh, we do tons of different traveling contests. And again, you don't have to be a future farmer of America. Um, you just have to be a student who wants to get involved and learn more about leadership. Another class that you can take is wildlife ecology, which actually counts as a science credit. Um, so I have a couple of different classes that count as science. So veterinary science as well as food science also count for science credits. So those are an opportunity that you can take later on down the road once you get to be a sophomore or junior or senior. So if you love the outdoors and everything that has to do with wildlife, wildlife ecology is your thing. So here's just a couple of pictures. Um, you can see the one in the middle. We get to go out to the creek. We do some water testing. We learn all about the different wildlife within Wisconsin. Or you can take your business. If you are a student who wants to be an entrepreneur someday, this is the class for you. Looking at how to run a business, how to start a business, and all of the different things that agriculture contributes to our state and our nation economically. And then lastly, greenhouse. So if you love to grow plants or just love to get your hands dirty or be outside, um, greenhouse is another one that's really awesome. Even if you don't take greenhouse, you can help out with the plant sale. You can help out in the greenhouse if you're an FFA member. There's tons of different things that you get to do. So those are just a few of the things that I get to do in my classroom and what make me love my job because we get to do a lot of those different hands-on activities. So now I believe art is next. Oh, here's my other courses. So I have lots of different courses. And Ms. McKay will tell you a little bit about her program. Mrs. McCabe. Um, she's obviously not here right now. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit of art. Usually this is the most fascinating part of the, the evening is me getting to talk about art. So hold on. 
uh, when you come into the high school, you would start out in basic art. Um, this is a one-year course. This is going to go through a lot of the different types and forms of art, from drawing to painting. I'm not sure if they quite get into sculpture and stuff like that, but they're going to get into a lot of different things, and then they're going to branch out from there over the next few years. Basic art after basic art, you can get into drawing, painting one, sculpture, ceramics, and then obviously the second level will come after the first level. Thank you. <laughs> art four, and then going into um, AP Studio Art. AP is a great opportunity for students to earn college credit while they're in high school. So in uh, AP Art, um, you actually do a portfolio, and then someone judges your portfolio to give you college credit or potential college credit. So some courses are going to start talking more about AP classes. If you're a student that has a plan to go on to a four-year institution, AP courses are great because they save your mom and dad money. Business and marketing. I don't think I do this one. Good evening, I'm Sarah Van Burkham and I teach business and marketing classes. And I'm Dan White. I also teach business classes and computer science classes. And we're excited to talk to you about another elective area that students have the opportunity to take some classes in. It's a great way for students to explore and take lots of different options while they're here in high school because that may set them on the path to a career that they love. So starting out, um, Intro to Business and Marketing is a prerequisite for many of the other marketing classes. It's a very basic, sets the foundation, and then all of the other marketing classes build off of it. Uh, we have a Microsoft Office class. It's interesting, we just had several ninth graders pass uh, Microsoft certification at the end of their first semester Microsoft class. When Dan talks about certification, those are items that students can put on their application, job applications, on their resumes, on scholarships, um, college applications that are real world cert certifications that they can show that they have real skills in. So um, after Intro to Business and Marketing, these are some of the other classes that after they take that prerequisite, they can go on and it just builds on that basic foundation, but in different areas of the marketing world and business world. We had a new class uh, this year, a digital business that I teach. I also teach uh, Accounting 1 and Accounting uh, 2. And I'm going to piggyback off of that. Um, accounting is one of the foundations of business. So if students think that they are going to go into the world of business, one of the first classes that they're going to have to take um, in their further education is accounting. And what they're going to cover in um, further education is going to go much faster than we go here. So having a foundation in accounting is probably one of the best ways to set themselves up for success in their first few years of school after high school. Um, okay. We have a business law class uh, here, and Sarah teaches uh, several personal finance sections as well. Um, just in science, as science has a lab, for applying the curriculum that they learn. We also have a learning lab, and it's the school store. So what the students learn in the classroom, we apply through a retail student-run um, enterprise that is a great opportunity for students to gain some experience, especially if they are in sports or other activities that don't allow them to have a part-time job. So they're able to gain some real-world experience while um, they're in high school, which will fit into their schedule. So that we don't forget, we want to talk about uh, FBLA and DECA. Uh, we're loading up the bus uh, this Saturday uh, with uh, a dozen students headed to uh, FBLA competitions in Oak Creek. And I know, Sarah, you just had uh, some uh, great results, success with uh, your, your DECA team uh, recently as well. Another opportunity for these students, if they have combined credits in, in the CTE, career and technical education areas, ag, tech ed, business ed, um, family and consumer ed, computer science, 
they can earn a black honors cord that they can wear at graduation. So another awesome opportunity for these students to show their success through high school. We also offer seven computer science classes here, and uh, three of the classes uh, are available to uh, ninth graders, including a, a web programming class, uh, intro to coding, and also a computer service and repair class. All right, Mr. Buck, I was going to represent our tech ed department. All right, uh, my name is Mr. Muckle, one of our tech ed teachers here. Um, Mr. Babcock's the other one, he's not here tonight. Uh, but we offer a wide variety of courses for people in the tech ed areas um, to be able to learn and be able to try new things. So for freshmen, we have a huge list of classes that you can try to take. Um, so depending on what your interest levels are, what you want to learn more about, if you want to get into the automotive areas, obviously small engines you want to go into, um, if you like woodworking, or if one's a great class, um, intro to graphics and video, that's kind of the intro level, which we kind of show you the basics of video editing and graphic um, design. But if you're really interested to it, then you can kind of take the other classes, which are digital imaging and editing productions. Um, usually best if you have a little bit of an um, intro to it before you get into those classes, because you kind of expect to know the software when you come into those. Um, then we also offer welding metal fabrication and intro to engineering. Okay, so we have a lot of classes we offer down in the secondary. This is kind of just for the freshmen. I'm going to show you a brief video here shortly, kind of highlighting some things that we actually do in our department. I think it's kind of cool to be able to see the things uh, compared to be able to talk about those. Um, that we get more of a little bit more visual to see what we do. Um, I'm also one of the track coaches, so I coach primarily the pole vaulters and work with the sprinters. So any kids interested in track stuff, let me know. Um, also, I do yearbook. I'm the advisor. Um, so as a sophomore, junior, and senior, you can be involved with yearbook, which is a great opportunity. It looks great on your applications and resumes. Um, trying to build uh, skills like that through things as you're doing things. So um, that's all run by students, and the pages are all designed by students. So, all right, I'm going to show you a quick little video, hopefully.
guys a great opportunity to come in, get your hands going, and build some really cool things. So, if you have any questions, let me know later on tonight. Thank you. Um, there are four members of the English department. I'm Sue White, and um, we have Jessica Eichstead, and Emma Drazen, and Kyle Lauer. And I guess what I'm here to tell you is you are stuck with us for four years. Um, because we are in the department that you have to take four credits of um, English. And the vast majority of you will start off in English 9. Um, and I would say that the decision about, I know that people are, get very concerned about taking English 10 as freshmen. Very few students do that. And I guess I'm here to reassure you by looking at this flow chart that um, even if they start in English 9, they can end up in AP English. You know, so people worry. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into deciding whether a student is ready to, to come right to English 10, which is what I teach. And it's not just academic ability, but it's um, work ethic and motivation and all sorts of factors, even um, standardized testing and how they're doing with that. So that's a decision that gets made with the guidance counselor, the English teacher, um, the student, and all of that together, um, this fire testing in the spring. So we won't know for sure until probably May or even June, and your student would get um, a letter saying that they're invited to take that class. And if you want to add English 10, I mean, and if you want to ask me more about that, a little more outside, you can do that. Um, Mr. Maurer and Ms. Drazen are the ones that typically teach English 9. So they're going to tell you about some of the things they do besides English. So I'm Ms. Drazen, and I'm going to bring the list. Um, so I run Zero and Ninth Hour. It's a before and after school program that allows kids to come in to a quiet, quiet place to make up a test, uh, make up detentions, just work on their homework. So that's me in the morning and the afternoon. I also am a co-advisor of student council. So we have homecoming, which is relatively early this year, Mr. Dupree, wherever you are. Um, so something to look forward to, especially homecoming. I'm sure you've been to the parades, things like that. Eco Club is a fairly new club. We just want to make the environment and the world a better place. Um, concessions, so I'm also a senior class advisor. We always need concession workers. You can work off your class trip. I think this graduating class, we have two kids who have raised their $500 by working concessions. So it's a great opportunity to earn that money. Uh, takes the financial burden off of you, and it's a fun time with a different range of people and these teachers are all of the advisors. I think that's all I have. I currently run a forensics program, which we're currently in session right now for. We'll be hosting some district here in the next couple of weeks. I get this opportunity for students that like to talk, that are very engaged in demonstrative speeches, persuasive ones, small acting, things like that are some of the pieces of work that I do. Additionally, I like to try to do a lot of other just random, different, fun activities for students. Um, just putting the books in runner survivor competition for students that can participate in. Dodgeball tournaments and other wide variety of random things kind of get people interested and be more excited about being obviously here in high school. And I guess I should have mentioned that that's why our um, course offerings are what they are because when they get to be upperclassmen we want that would want to keep their interests and so they have a lot more choice about what kind of class they take. So they're on the English credit but hopefully in a way that fits them best. So, like I said, if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. Jessica Iscott isn't here tonight, and she runs a drama club. And so that's a club of people that often those people are involved in the musical and in the plays, but they don't have to be. So if you have an interest in that, you'll hear about that. Um, there are announcements made, and so get involved with that. Um, she's in the English department, so you'll see posters up in there. Thank you. Jennifer Dale. I am the FCE teacher here. We have two exciting things that are going on in the culinary field right now. One, Little Debbie is releasing ice cream flavors of oatmeal pie, honey buns, cosmic brownies. Probably not very good for you, but hey, something new. And then McDonald's, can't believe we're talking about McDonald's, but I'm going to, is also have their secret menu that is coming out that it's like a Chick-fil-A and um, chicken nuggets. Or no, I'm sorry, 
the fish fillet sandwich with chicken nuggets, or you can get a fish sandwich with burgers. Doesn't look very appealing, but some of you might like that. So I have some good news and some bad news. Which one would you like first? Good news. Okay, we're gonna start with the bad news. Thank you. As freshmen, the only class that I offer is our intro to foods class. It's kind of the bad news. The good news is, is that when you get ready for your career, I teach a lot of that stuff, or I coordinate it. So I work really closely with Blackhawk Technical College. So a lot of the classes you're gonna see up here are either going to be advanced handy, which means that you can take that college class here, either with me or an instructor from Blackhawk, and then you can get credit there at their college if you're going to go there. Or it's called dual credit courses, which means that you can take my, or they're my classes, but you can teach classes in my department, or take classes in my department with myself, or different instructors from Blackhawk, and you can then take that transcript to other, other uh, facilities, colleges. One of them I teach is called Food Quantities and Measures, and so that's the second culinary class. And again, that's, I'm teaching that college credit course just here at our school, so then it's no cost to you. Um, I teach four different early childhood courses, so basically it's that first semester of college for free. If you're interested in working with children, birth to um, third grade, so it's a great way to do that. And then those are the classes that I teach over there. Um, new right now, I also teach a course currently at Blackhawk Technical College, and I talked to them about teaching it here at our school, so I offer it to our students, and it's called the Culture of Healthcare. And um, it's, if you're interested in going into the health field, the other class that I coordinate with Blackhawk, um, a Blackhawk instructor actually comes here to our school and does our nursing assistant program. So if you want to get ahead, um, a lot of the schools are now you have to petition to get into the nursing program, and taking our CNA course would be a, just moving you up the line on that. I also coordinate with Blackhawk our firefighter cadet program. So if you're interested in being a firefighter, that class is actually taught with Mr. Whitmore down at our fire um, and protection services department, our fire department. You get to go on ride-alongs, you're gonna be putting out fires, you're gonna be climbing up ladders. I mean, it's, it's an actually really cool opportunity. And then new this semester, and currently that we're teaching it right now, is our criminal justice course. So if you're interested in being correctionals, police officer, going into the military, um, I have one student right now that is in the military taking this class, and at first he wasn't quite sure about it, but he's actually like, no, this is, this is what I need. He's actually realizing that it's a really good course for him. Um, it's a police officer that actually is teaching it. He's a, a a sergeant at the Janesville Police Department that comes here to our school. So again, you're getting that college credit for free. Um, I also coordinate our school to career program. So if you would like to earn high school credit and leave school early and get credit and work at your job, that is something that you'll want to come and see me with. Um, I have some students that just come to school in the morning their senior year and then they work in the afternoon or maybe it's just one hour out of their day. And through that, you can earn your certification through the Department of Workforce Development, put it on your college application, um, resume looks good, and we also kind of have a certificate. If you don't fall underneath the Department of um, Workforce Development, then we can get you a certification through the Department of Public Instruction, too, because they have a co-op program. Um, before I leave, then, I also coach basketball cheerleading. So we usually have tryouts in October, so that's something if you're interested. And then I'm also a senior class advisor with Ms. Drazen that we run concessions. And so um, we would love to have you there to um, help your family with that burden of not going on a class trip, which is, sounds like a really good time. Thank you. Ms. Meyer, Ms. Purple, 
I'm Ms. Terrell, and Ms. Will couldn't be here this evening, but if she were here, she would probably be interested in telling you about soccer, girls' soccer specifically, and Social Justice Club, but I imagine Ms. Weiss will talk about that a little bit more, and that's it. Okay. What do you think about math? Oh, it does it. <laughs> Next question you might ask yourself, you don't have to see us all like you do the English people, but how many math credits do I need for graduation? Well, Mr. Allen, how many legs does it take to get to the insert math credits there? Let's find out. One, two, three. How many legs does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. The world may never know, but you absolutely just have to get three math credits to graduate. <laughs> Mr. Rat! <Ratton. laughs> Yay! Alright, two out of three credits should be one of these things. I'm not going to read them. They're in your book. Half a credit can be for these. I'm not going to read them. They're in your book. Some people are super smart. Some people feel like they're behind, much like math 10 or English 10. So if you succeed in Algebra 1, which many of you will take as a freshman, um, per teacher recommendation, you also have the option of taking Geometry and Algebra 2 at the same time. So it's tough work workload, but people can do it if they feel like they're behind and they want to get ahead, much like with the English 10. Um, we also have a nice feature of having math labs throughout the day. Um, I think currently we have five hours of math lab right now out of the eight that we have. So if a kid has a study hall that coincides with the math lab, then we have a math teacher usually available one of those hours to help. Um, we also run them once a week during um, home base. Yep. So that's a good feature we have too. What else Nothing else. Thanks, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we completely ditch, I'm going to talk about a couple of other clubs before my team leaves me. Um, I am the football cheerleading coach. Um, unlike most sports, we actually start in July, which is kind of wild. Um, we start at the very end of July where we do tryouts. So if you're interested in that, please be looking for information on that. In addition, I'm also the math team advisor because if you didn't get enough math during your school day, why not do more math outside? Um, it's a great opportunity to put something on your resume that actually looks academic, looks really cool, and if you earn points, you're basically the coolest kid in school. So, um, the last club that I'm a part of is Anime Club. Anime Club is a very, very much student-run organization um, for students who are interested in anime and Japanese culture. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, find me. I am not Mr. Jostin and I'm not Ms. Skifton either, but I will be talking a little bit about our band and our choir. Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Jostin. I'm sorry I can't make it uh, in person tonight. Um, I am in Bigfoot with a few of my high school band students who are participating in the Rock Valley Honors uh, band. Um, I'll be speaking on behalf of the music department tonight, um, band and choir, and then a few other classes that we have. So first off, about your music. Music is, is a really awesome way to collaborate with your, with your fellow uh, peers. Um, it's a way to meet new people. Um, we have some really unique performance opportunities, both in band and choir, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, it looks awesome on college applications. It shows you're well-rounded, um, as well as you have the opportunity to earn a fine arts court at graduation um, if you meet the requirements of being in a, in a band and choir ensemble for consecutive semesters with a certain GPA. Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Jostin. I'm sorry I can't make it in person tonight. Um, I am in Bigfoot with... He's still in Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll start with band. Um, in Edgerton, we have two uh, performance ensembles um, that are during the school day. They are concert band, which consists of freshmen and sophomore, 
in wind ensemble, which consists of juniors and seniors. Um, despite these two bands being separate, um, both bands do essentially the same thing. We have concerts, we have three concerts we perform at in the EPEG, as well as we do the marching band together, um, both parade and on the field for our homecoming halftime show, as well as we do pep bands, we play for football, volleyball, we wrestling, boys and girls basketball, swim, and we've even done soccer games. Um, we have an after school jazz band program. Um, you have an opportunity to perform in solo ensemble, which has an individual or small group event, as well as we take trips. Um, next year, we are heading to New York City along with the choir, um, and it's really a really cool opportunity um, in, if you are in band or choir. Another thing that we've done this year is we, we participated in the University of Wisconsin Marching Band's Band Day. So we took the high school band up to Camp Randall for the Badger game against Army. We were able to perform at halftime with other schools from around the state of Wisconsin, and it was a really awesome opportunity. And one opportunity coming up is that we are, in fact, hosting the University of Wisconsin Band um, in Edgerton on February 19th in the Varsity Gym, which is a really cool opportunity for our students and the community. Give me a whoop whoop if you're the marching band at UW. All right, we'll start with band. Whoop. I know um, I have one. <laughs> we have two uh, performance ensembles um, that are during the school day. Okay. <laughs> Concert band. Uh, open the freshman and sophomores wind ensemble like you. Whoa. And then here's a little choir. I'll let you read it. Sophomores, if you're looking for an choir, obviously you're going to be looking at Tiger Choir, and then as you get a little bit older, you'll be looking to transition into concert choir. <coughs> we have a couple of, uh, well, he gets to talk about that. Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Josen. I'm sorry I can't make it uh, in person tonight. Um, I am in big foot with uh, my friends. Um, I'll be speaking on behalf of the music department tonight. Um, band and choir. I think we heard that already. <laughs> so non, non performance music classes, uh, music appreciation, music theory, and new this year is music production. So he'll be looked, uh, actually working in the tech ed department, mostly in our, our computers uh, class, using programs similar to GarageBand to actually produce music. Hello. <laughs> music production, like I said, is brand new this year. Before I transition to physical education, uh, Mr. Josen, uh, raise your hand if you had Mr. Josen for a football coach last year. Yes, I know he coaches middle school football. I hope you enjoy that. Um, he also does baseball, uh, so he is a JV coach, I believe, in baseball. Um, he is part, they're doing a New York trip this um, next year, and what else? NHS, thank you, that's the one I was forgetting. National Honor Society, so he's, he is part of that. Ms. Gifton uh, is involved in our chamber singers. Our chamber singers is an elite group of singers that uh, perform between Thanksgiving and Christmas. They do primarily holiday songs. It's a really short window, so they start um, before Thanksgiving, uh, just a few weeks before Thanksgiving, and then it's during that break that they come to different things like our craft fair. Uh, they, they might go into the Lopec, the Rotary Botanical Gardens. Uh, they sing at different uh, venues um, on that. The big plug for them is they're looking at doing a combined trip next year to New York City. So if you're band of a choir next year, there's a good chance you'll be able to be involved in that. At this time, I'd like to introduce Nikki Olson, who's going to talk a little bit about physical education. Hi, everyone. Uh, like what Dr. Coombe said, my name is Nikki Olson. I am here on behalf of the PE department, so my partner in crime, Russ Leeds. 
is so sorry that he could not make it tonight while he is enjoying a nice steak dinner. Um, so he, I, if you know him, you know that he is very not sad to be here. Um, but he did want to make for sure that I did put in a big plug for football. Um, if anybody has any questions or concerns or interest in football, that you make for sure to email him. Um, Mr. DeWar will also be coming up, and he is also somebody that you can talk to tonight if you have any questions about football. So before I kind of get into some PE, there are only two classes that you freshmen will be able to take. So you have your two offerings is Introduction to Physical Education or Intro to PE, and that is where we're going to do a lot of games like um, lifetime sports, give you a little bit of team sports, some individual things, um, more sport-based. And then we have Intro to Strength and Conditioning. So at the high school, we have a huge um, population that takes strength and conditioning. This is a great introduction class um, for those of you that are heavy into athletics or just want to get to know the weight room a little bit. Um, we have a really awesome weight room last year in about December. Um, we have got all brand new equipment. So we have an awesome um, facility here to kind of use and um, get used to knowing what kind of goes on in the weight room. Um, other classes that you can take after your freshman year is strength and conditioning. So this is just kind of that building block off of intro to strength and conditioning. We get into a little bit more um, like our maxes and things like that. Uh, we have team sports, which is a class that I teach and Mr. Leeds uh, will teach. And this is just very team-based. So we will do a lot of um, basketball, football things, ultimate frisbee, anything that has to do with, deal with team. Lifetime sports is something that we try to do um, with things that we can use for our entire lifetime. So we try to go bowling, we try to go to Tri-County, go roller skating. Um, some of them love it, some of them hate it. It's kind of fun. Um, they, they have a good time. We try to go golfing. Um, and things like that. So it's something that they can do for their entire life. Racket sports is another thing is any striking implement. So we do not only our pickleball, our badminton, our tennis, um, but we do anything with an extension of the arm. Sports and officiating and coaching is a class that Mr. Leeds um, teaches. And if WIA kind of lines up, we usually get them um, certified to become um, an official which is a really cool class, and for some of you that um, wouldn't mind doing that for summer sports, whether that be baseball or basketball, um, this is a really good opportunity for you guys to get to know some of the other sports out there. And then I am also the health teacher here, so like what Ms. White said, you are stuck with me for at least, um, most likely four years, if you take um, your PE classes other than strength and conditioning. I am also the assistant varsity softball coach with uh, Coach DeWar over here, who will talk a little bit more about that. Um, Healthy Living One, oops, too fast. There we go. Healthy Living One is something that is split up a little bit different from your SCE right now. You have Ms. Dale's class that will talk a little bit more about the food aspect, and then you have your Healthy One, which we're going to talk about nutrition, lifestyle diseases, career. So, yes, we're going to do some Zello, but we make it as easy as possible. Um, we'll talk about relationships and dating. We talk about sexuality and human growth and development. I know that that's all of your favorite unit, right? Yes. Um, stress and mental health, and then drug and alcohol use, and then wellness in general. Healthy Living 2 is usually a junior class, but I've been getting, we kind of switched it to 1 and 2 because we're starting to realize that not all of our juniors can fit that into their schedule. So sometimes we end up with some, um, a good amount of or seniors in there as well. So this is kind of, um, I say that Healthy Living 1 is my meat and potatoes, a lot of the good information, and then we kind of dig in deeper in Healthy Living 2. Um, we also talk a lot more about like pregnancy and birth, first aid procedures, and then we do a lot with CPR, um, like the pump and call. So if you have any questions about PE or health, we'll be outside later. Science. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tony DeWar, and, and I have the pleasure of teaching with four other really fantastic science teachers here at the high school, Mrs. Farrington, Mr. Gerard, Mrs. Rati, and Mrs. So, so uh, When it comes to your uh, science, uh, as mentioned earlier, you have three credits in science uh, to graduate uh, at EHS. Uh, as a ninth grader, most of you probably will be placed in biology, and some of you may have taken biology uh, while you were at the middle school. Um, you would have the option of going into chemistry, and we would actually prefer that you go um, into chemistry. 
Uh, in 10th grade then, those people, those uh, students who are in biology, hopefully will go into, into chemistry. Um, and if you actually have chemistry as a ninth grader, you can actually start to maybe start to think about maybe some of our electives um, that we do that we do a lot. Um, uh, biology and chemistry in your first two years gives you a really nice broad background to head into a lot of different uh, uh, other areas potentially. Um, anatomy and uh, physiology, which is a full year course now, it's actually an advanced standing course with Blackhawk. Uh, principles of aquaponics, working in our aquaponics greenhouse. Uh, biotechnology, environmental science, uh, we have space science, uh, with conceptual physics, you have lots of different areas that you can, you can head into. We have some honors classes to get you potentially ready to go into the AP, uh, AP classes. We have honors chemistry um, and honors physics, which generally we have a lot of students taking those who plan on taking uh, uh, AP courses in, in either one of those. We offer three AP science courses, AP biology, uh, which is what I teach, uh, AP chemistry, Mrs. Olin teaches that, and uh, AP Physics, uh, Mrs. Refty teaches uh, AP Physics. Again, we have a lot of great different pathways, whether you want to go into the life sciences, the physical sciences, or the chemical sciences. We'll be around later tonight, ask us questions and things that you might think that you might want to do. Uh, also, um, as Mrs. Olson said, that I, I coach, uh, I'm, I'm part of the football coaching staff, if you're interested in you know, what are things that you could do uh, ahead of time before the season starts in the, in the fall, second or third of August. I hate to tell you we get to come back early. Um, you can see me later on. And also I'm the uh, head softball coach here uh, at the high school. And if you'd like to talk to me about that, um, please feel free. Thank you. Is this what class is going to be like next year? Because like, whoop, whoop, looking forward to it. Uh, my name is Carly Andrew. I'm one of the uh, three social studies teachers here at the high school. Um, good news, bad news, pretty much every single one of you is going to have me next year. Um, because unfortunately, social studies is not one of the classes where you get to have any choice as a freshman. Ooh, womp womp. But the classes are still excellent, if I may say so myself. Um, so as a freshman, first semester we will do civics. Um, this is a course where we talk primarily about the United States and the government of the United States and your role in that government and how to make that government serve you. Second semester, we go into more of a global perspective. We take on world geography and we spend a lot more time talking about what other places in the world are like, and how other people choose to live their lives. Yeah. After that, you get a little bit more choice, like just minimal. Um, as you are, when you are a sophomore, most sophomores take US history. Um, that's with a wonderful teacher named Lynn Weidenheimer. She teaches primarily sophomores. Um, and then when you are a junior, you will have the honor to work with the nationally board certified teacher that is Pete Lean. Something we all look forward to, getting to work with that man. Um, you have a couple of choices as a sophomore if you don't want to take U.S. history. Actually, I mean, if you want to take U.S. history but you want to take it super intensely, you can take APUSH, which is AP United States History. Um, that is one of our other electives that we offer. Um, also, if you are willing to venture into the wilderness of Pete Lean's classroom, Instead of world history, you can take AP psychology, which is a little dangerous, so if you want to live a little dangerously, that's an option you have. Uh, other electives that you all have the opportunity to take at the high school level in terms of social studies credits include um, psychology and social issues, where we talk about sociology. Um, and then finally, current events, that one changes year to year, so it's always up in the air what we will talk about. Um, you need three social studies credits to graduate from high school. Three, yay. Um, what else should I talk about? Um, the wonderful Mr. Pete Lean is the freshman football coach. He tells great stories. Anybody knows what those are? Look forward to it. 
uh, prior to Mr. Dupuy taking over, I was the athletic director here as well. So, a couple things. Um, one, I had the opportunity to go on this uh, Costa Rican exchange. Uh, so it was an awesome, awesome, awesome visit. Um, I failed in a laboratory activity because I did not speak Spanish. Um, so, but it, 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 it was absolutely awesome. It was great. I'm glad that the kids uh, did speak uh, Spanish quite well and uh, they could help me survive while I was down in Costa Rica. So, um, wonderful opportunity without a doubt. A um, couple other things, and Miss uh, Grayson forgot like something on her list. Uh, I also helped run the, the freshman um, summit and, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but uh, Ms. Grayson also is involved in that. So um, last year, Dr. Coombs and I, uh, we started inviting every eighth grader over to kind of take them on a little tour. So uh, I know at the beginning, um, Dr. Coombs asked how many are completely new uh, to it, how many are kind of like uh, seasoned veterans per se, and even though it's the, the, it might be new, if you're part of sports, you might have been up here, you kind of already got a pretty good uh, idea and the layout of the high school and kind of where everything's at. But we offer many opportunities just in case you haven't. Um, so first off, everybody will be coming over for an eighth grade tour, so either myself or Dr. Coombs will kind of be leading that. Uh, so that's one opportunity that you go there. Uh, second thing is, is that somebody from uh, the high school, uh, via our students, which easier to talk to them, they can answer the questions probably a little bit uh, better than what we would be able to. Um, so students will be coming over to talk about individual sports, talking about different clubs, um, and anything and everything that we have going on in the high school. Uh, I heard Dr. Coombe say it, I heard uh, Mr. McCoy say it, just make sure that you get involved uh, any way possible that you can. I mean, in some of the new clubs that we had started, you know, we got trap shooting teams, bowling teams, ice fishing teams, we have people traveling um, to the northern part of the state, ice fishing and tournaments uh, just this past couple weekends. So there's a lot of different things that are out there. Um, to make sure that you can get involved in whatever it is that you wish to. Um, then, also, the first day of school, uh, so the first day that we come back to school, the morning is all freshman only. So even if you haven't had an opportunity, for some reason you, you missed a day that we have the tour, um, you, you'll get a chance to kind of at least feel somewhat more familiar walking through the schedules, meeting your teachers, uh, doing all the different things that you might need to do in order to uh, feel a little bit more comfortable uh, coming over to the high school. We just want to make sure that we have smooth transitions. On that note, the last thing then, uh, as far as an opportunity for you, is Freshman Summit. So, you can see the dates for Freshman Summit this year are July 25th through the, 20th, uh, through the 28th. Um, and what we do, uh, and Ms. Grayson didn't talk about this again, but what we do is this is made, mostly led by our, uh, our freshman mentors. Um, so there are a number of staff that are with us as well, but it's, rep, it's, it's run by our freshman mentors, so they do a great job uh, coming back and trying to make sure that the the incoming freshmen feel comfortable. Um, they knew what it was like when they were coming in as freshmen, and, and so our upperclassmen run this whole thing. So our three days, um, the first day is spent on campus, uh, and it's a half a day, and, and that we're really just kind of going through again. You'll have your schedule, hopefully. Ms. Springstead was talking about hopefully schedules will be done. Uh, so you'll have a schedule. You'll be able to go visit your classrooms, see where everything is at, find your locker, uh, and then go through a, a variety of just different transitions with our high school students so they can kind of let you know what it takes to be successful here uh, and what to get involved in. So the first day is at high school. Second day we spend out at Silverwood. The first half of the day what we do is we do um, basically kind of volunteer work. Um, and so we, we help out uh, the people out at Silverwood. So we got different crews that are out doing uh, either out on the, the trails and cleaning the trails. We got people that are painting the old buildings that they have there. We have people that are doing, um, taking care of the mulching and just basically kind of helping out. So we're just volunteering our time for the first half of the day. The second part of the day then, uh, we do some team building activities. And again, that's run by our freshman mentors. And then the third day is at Bethel Horizon. And so we're there a full day. Bethel Horizon then is a ropes course. Um, and so uh, as you can see by just some of the pictures here, uh, there's high rope swings, there's different uh, rappelling walls and stuff, there's uh, rock climbing that they do, um, and, and then a lot of teamwork uh, as well. So again, we have multiple ways for our freshmen, incoming freshmen, to hopefully feel comfortable that this is an awesome place to be. So by taking tours, coming on up for Freshman Summit, we'll give you a great opportunity, and our first day is uh, half the days for freshmen. So, Dr. Coombs, wrap that up. So we're
we're halfway through. We're almost there. Now, if you've been here before, you know that's a really old joke, but it usually gets better laughter than what I just got right here. So, um, one last plug is our senior class trip. Unfortunately, our senior class trip, we haven't been able to go on for the last couple of years. You know why. Uh, this year, we're back at it again. We're really excited to go to take our seniors this year to Washington, D.C. Um, and we see no reason why we're not going to be able to continue a 60-plus year tradition that, unfortunately, is just taking two years off um, but to get back on it. Uh, great opportunities for you to lower the cost. It's $500, and $500 is pretty inclusive to everything. Um, and if that is a large sum of money, your student can reduce that cost by working concessions, selling magazines, doing some of the fundraisers that are available to them um, throughout their first three and a half years. But it's something that I feel very strongly about, that kids partake in. Unfortunately, we don't get all the kids that go on it. Some choose not to, and I really believe they regret that later on because it's a, just a wonderful opportunity to kind of culminate sometimes 12, 13 years of being together as, uh, as students. And um, I, I hope you take the opportunity in four years. I know it seems like it's a long ways away, but it'll be here before you know it. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We are gonna hang out, we being the staff, we're gonna hang out a little bit in the outside area. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Otherwise, I hope you drive safe. Thanks for coming. so bad.